Okay, let's try to start then. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Roberto Cavicchioli, and I'm a senior researcher from the University of Modena in Reggio Emilia, collaborating with the ICOR organization. I'm leader of the deployment of one of the 5G meta use cases in the Italian cities of Modena and Turin. Welcome to the third web where we will present which data is available to third parties and how to use it to build your innovative service or application. First, let's start with the basics, describing what the developer in your team needs to bring in order to be up and running, developing your app using the data gathered from the platform as fast as possible. Since 5G Meta is an IoT messaging platform, you will need a way of getting the messages to your laptop. For this reason, you will need a Python developer setup. We suggest to have a Linux-based Ubuntu 20.04 system with Python uh, installed with the version greater than 3.6, also pip to install the required libraries for Python, and git to clone the code samples from the repositories. You can also try with a Conda environment setup in a Windows machine, but the support for it is experimental at this point in time. Now, let's see what are the first steps that you will need to take in order to start receiving data. First, you will go to the documentation page at the link that is provided, and you will familiarize yourself with the content of the documentation. Then, you can use Git to clone to your laptop the repository link that is shown in the documentation. This will contain all the code samples that you can modify in order to implement your service. You need also to install some dependencies using both pip, which is the package manager for Python, and apt, which is the package manager for Linux. All of these steps will be also described in the documentation. Remember that each team participating in the hackathon will be provided with a username and a password, so your account, in order to access the platform itself. Now, let's see how to choose and pick some data flow that are streaming entities within the 5G meta platform. In the previous webinar, it has been shown a command line interface client that has been used to discover and browse the different data flow. For the hackathon, the 5G Meta platform is planning to provide you a user-friendly dashboard, which has been developed by Acodis. After you log in, you will be able to browse different data flows available on the platform. Each data flow that is listed for a certain area or tile, as previously described, is characterized by an ID of the data flow. And when you go click on it, then you will have access to other information, such as the sample ratio of the data, which namely is the frequency in which the data is sent, the format for the data, which can be a video, an image, or CITS metadata, and so on. Then, when you subscribe, you will be able to get the information that you need to put in your code or in the configuration file of your sample. This information is the IoT topic name, the Kafka broker address and port using the code samples for, in order to consume the data from the data flow. And you then are able to process the data to your liking. Now we will see which type of data will stream on the 5G data platform with the hackathon. All the data that is described in the following slides has been collected or produced by the 5G data consortium and in particular from, from the use case providers, namely the Decomtech, Vedecom, Links, and University of Modern Energy. We will show mainly three types of data, images, videos, and CITS messages that can have a payload of text or JSON message. First, as, well, as I was saying, we have images. We equip cars with a front camera and recorded images while driving in different trajectories. The recording has been divided then as a sequence of images. During the hackathon, this sequence will be replayed in a loop and the single images will be available on the platform as data flows. 
This is simulating data generated from real world records. The images are taken from different locations in Spain, such as three areas of San Sebastian, which is a beautiful city in mountains and sea in the north of Spain. From 20, 8 minutes, and 34 minutes left. Then we have also an highway trip of one hour taken from San Sebastian to the other city of Pamplona in Spain. To consider other different geographic areas to choose using the tiles, we have also streaming images from two trajectories that are in Toulouse, in the southern part of France. One of them is seven minutes long and the other is nine minutes long. If you want to work instead with videos instead of images, we provide a 360 degree view from a car in Modena, Italy. Since we equip this vehicle with four cameras and we will stream this as H264 RTSP video streams. This is a simulate a vehicle with advanced ADAS capabilities that is moving in a sensorized area known as the Modena Automotive Smart Lab. Before moving to the other data type, I need to briefly introduce the ETSI standard for Cooperative Intelligent Transportation System or CITS for short. ETSI is the European Telecommunication Standard Institute and it defines the standards for the V2X, so the vehicle to everything networks for vehicular communication. This is the standard that needs to be followed by both the onboard units and the roadside units. The message data structure is then defined and the counter or the payload of the message we depend on the type of station that is communicated. For example, if a vehicle is sending its data, it will include the position, the motion state, the size of the vehicle, the type of the vehicle, and so on. The format is defined from the ETH Institute, and you can see here a schematization using the JSON format that has been provided by Lynx, which is a partner of the 5G network project. The message is composed of two main parts. The first is the header that describes what will be included in the payload part, and then the data itself. Here, on the left, an example of a cooperative award message in the JSON format, so a CAN message, with the header on top and the CAN data part on the bottom. Please remind that the Etsy standard defines also the format for each type of data that is exchanged. For example, if we are exchanging data to the longitude, we need to use integer values as defined by the standard, but to represent micro degrees as unit of measurement. On the other hand, if you are sending the heading of the vehicle, so its direction, it will be sent as an integer, but with tenth of degree of precision. Now that we have understood how CITS messages are made, we describe the simulated CITS data. We will simulate 50 vehicles sending ethical messages 10 times a second, and each will send its position, the vehicle speed, the acceleration, and the direction, so the heading of the vehicle. These message, the message payload will be in the JSON format that we just showed and we will use the SUMO traffic simulator for getting the traffic data for the areas of Toulouse and San Sebastian, the two from the previously described image dataset. Also, the SUMO dataset can also provide access to the traffic light status at intersection and the amount of available parking in defined areas of the city. Here, in this video, you can see as the vehicles that are simulated and moving in the city of Toulouse. The vehicles are in yellow, and you can see that they are arriving at the intersection, stopping at traffic lights depicted as green and red lines on the street. They can also enter and exit the roundabout, as the real vehicles would do in a normal city. All of this is simulated, and for each vehicle, a CITS message is prepared and sent to the platform in order for you to be able to edit. 
If you are interested in developing a service based on more aggregated data, let's say, you can exploit the traffic data set. This data is from real traffic monitoring detectors in the city of Paris that compute the traffic flow as both throughput and occupation rate of the vehicles on the monitoring roads. For example, the throughput is defined as the number of vehicles detected every minute, while the occupation rate is the sum of the travel time for each vehicle given a time window. This dataset will also be replayed in the loop during the hackathon, and we will have five data sources, so five topics on the shown uh, path that is on the right, and the data will have this style, for example, so this will be in this part of France. You can access the, all the CITS data using the CITS consumer screen. If you want instead to work to a more detailed data set, this one will be streamed from the modern automotive smart area. Here, there is an edge infrastructure deployed that is detecting and tracking the road users moving in the area in real time. And it computes the position, the speed, the orientation, and the category of each detected road users. This data, as the previous one, is streamed as a metadata in the JSON format. And it will be a payload in a CITS message. Obviously, the JSON schema will be provided for you in order to read and parse the data. In the same area, the street cameras are also detecting and monitoring the parked cars, providing information about the status of the parking spots and their GPS position. This data will be streamed again on the Pipe Data Platform as a JSON payload wrapped in the CITS message. Finally, on the advanced ADAS vehicle that we equipped with four cameras, we also have installed a camera that frames the driver from the inside and monitors its status. As you can see in this video, the system is capable of assessing if the driver is in a normal condition or if its driving capabilities are impaired by, let's say, drowsiness or distraction by a telephone call or smoking a cigarette and so on. The attention level and the triggers will be sent over the 5G Meta platform, and you can get it again using the code samples that consume the CITS messages. Now we have described all the data types that will be available on the platform. Let's see some examples on about how to get this data, how to process it, and show a possible service project. In this video, here, you can see that using the command line interface that has been previously presented in the second webinar and the data consumer samples, it's possible to obtain the JSON formatted data through the Python samples that will be provided to you. Remembering that using your username and password, you need to connect to the uh, platform. Then you choose the tile that you're interested. Then the list of possible data that is streamed on that tile is given to you, and then you choose which, how, how big you need the computational capabilities of the platform to send to you the data, the, the faster the better. Then you can start, you will get the IoT topic, the address, the port, and the schema registry board. Given all of these to the Python CITS consumer that is running on the bottom left terminal, will start getting you the data that you need. For example, in a couple of seconds, you will see here that we will receive a CITS CAN message with all the Etsy information that we were describing before. As you can see, it has been uh, uh, written from uh, the CITS Medium 90 topic that is the one provided by the platform and all the information for the uh, attitude, longitude, position, and so on, as described, is included in the JSON message. On the other hand, in all the code samples that will be provided to you, there will be described a command line with add your code here. Here, for example, you can use OpenSV in Python to, co to compute some filters on an image that you are getting. You can do edge detection, you can do a neural network detection or something, whatever you want. And then you can provide the processed uh, data or metadata that you get 
to so this is a shell tool or as a, a service to another application or for example if you use the parking position you can write a visualizer similar to this one for the status of the parkings in the city as you can see from this detection all the parking slots are full and therefore in the visualizer all the parking slots are red and occupied but as soon as one becomes free then you see that the parking slot become green because the detected slot is free as well and then for example here we have a 3d visualization of these slots as the gps position is also set this was the last webinar of the series and we wait all of you in this one i invite all of you to bring very creativity and exploit the 5G Meta platform with great CAM application and services. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, write in the chat and I will try to answer them to the best of my capabilities. Thank you. I don't see any questions yet. <clears throat> Roberto, actually, if you can go in the dashboard and you go in questions, you can see that we collected one, two, three, four of them. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's all right. I mean, they're all there. I, because I was I was checking in the chat, so. Uh, there is a pretty dedicated um, side of. Uh, Goes meaning that it's questions. If you pop them up, you can you will see them. I'm checking. Sorry about that. If you just can read me one of the questions, I will try to answer that. Sorry, I, I'm not able to to see it right now. Um, perhaps it's only my uh, prerogative as a organizer not you as a presenter perhaps but again it should be between pools uh, uh, pools and hands out anyhow <clears throat> the first question we got is from Tiago Alves and asked if we will be able to access to the data prior to the hackathon uh, okay. and second one from Shinmei Shirivastav I will apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly uh, is he is do we have to use the data set provided by you in the hackathon or can we use our own data set? Okay, let's start with the first question and then we go. So the idea is that all the data needs to be streamed on the platform to be able to be used. So uh, we presented here how the data should be formatted for your uh, knowledge but you won't be able for now to access this data set because uh, uh, they will be given uh, as an open source data set at the end of the project but not right now so this will also let's say cover all the second one because the idea is for you to provide a uh, let's say a, a service that is uh, uh, based on the data that is streamed on the platform. So instead of using your own data, you should be able to use uh, a lot of different data from the, these uh, uh, possible available data types. Thank you very much for your answer. Then I think we can move on with another question, which is, uh, well, thanks for your presentation, nice presentation. I have one question. What's the format I expect videos to be and how do I receive them? Okay, the idea is that uh, in the platform uh, there is uh, an RTSP, let's say, video broker, and so the videos are usually in H.264 format. In particular, we are also able to provide uh, WebRTC or UDP, let's say, for, uh, streaming video formats, but the, the way of the, the format of the video itself, it will be H.264 encoded. Okay, amazing. And then we have, uh, I think we I can pair these two questions because they're coming from the same person. Yeah. These are the only supported data, data sets or are, the, are there any data sets from 
and LIDAR, 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 I apologize if I don't pronounce that. Yeah, right. LIDAR is okay. LIDAR, okay, thank you. Yeah, for now, uh, for the hackathon, there will be only cameras, videos, and so on. The idea is also to be able to share LIDAR uh, streaming on the platform, but it will be for the end of the project. So as of now, we are not still uh, supporting the LIDAR. But it will be much more similar to a video since how the point cloud of the LIDAR is sent is usually a stream of data or a stream of point cloud, so it will be much more similar to the video stream. Great, thank you very much. And <clears throat> We are now out of question, unless there is anyone else right now on the spot. Or is it, if there is anything you want to point out or add, uh, Roberto? I'm thinking, but uh, I, I think that we will have during the hackathon a series of tutorials that will be provided to you at the beginning of the hackathon in order to explain to you even better how to use your laptop to get the data to, uh, to the platform. So you shouldn't have a lot of issues with this since a lot of technical people will help you set up your, uh, let's say, data processing environment. Okay. Um... And I will say that's it. Yes, and this is, we have a last, uh, another question from uh, the uh, audience. Is the dashboard uh, being, will the dashboard be included in the hackathon? The idea is to have the dashboard available in order for the users of, and, and the hackathoners to, to have a more user-friendly interface to select the uh, data flows ID. But uh, since there is also the capabilities of having it by the command line interface, you can use both whatever you want, since both the command line interface and the, and the dashboard use the API that are on the platform in order to provide you the available data flows that you can consume. Okay, thank you. Um... One last question, perhaps. I usually take my time because the last two times when I was uh, wrapping things up, uh, uh, there was always a, a question getting in, but I see none. So I leave back the floor to you, Roberto, for the final words. Okay, so as I was saying, thank you very much everyone for attending. We hope that you will enjoy your stay in Lisbon during the hackathon and that you will bring, as I was saying, your creativity in order to see different views and different business models to use and provide new services for this kind of data that will be provided to you. So thank you very much again and have a good day.